Today we are making pistachio brittle because um, pistachio is one of our very favorite nuts and brittle is a very versatile ingredient. People think of it as just candy, which it is actually a wonderful candy because you don't break your teeth on it, but you can use it for a lot more than that. We like to chop it up and fold it into ice creams or garnish cakes with it. The other thing that you can do is chop it a little bit more finely and then you can use it as a seasoning. You can blend it with herbs or spices and uh, salt and pepper. Okay, this is half a cup of water and we are going to boil the water and the corn syrup with a half a cup of white sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. Okay, and we're just gonna turn the oven on there. Um, and I'm gonna take this pretty quickly because I'm gonna be standing here working on the brittle and keeping an eye on it so I can afford to have a relatively high heat. If I were gonna do other things or walk away from the pot, then I would do a much lower heat. So in this pot, we have the water, the corn syrup, the white and the brown sugars. The water is there to make sure that the brown sugar doesn't crystallize because of its tendency to clump. And we're going to bring this to a boil and then I'm going to add salt and butter to it. The reason that I feel very free to stir this sugar mixture is because it has a blend of corn syrup and water in here. The corn syrup is an inverted sugar and so that is going to work in conjunction with the water to keep everything from crystallizing, but because I used white sugar and brown sugar, I wanted to make sure that everything was well blended, just so that there weren't any clumps or things that could burn on the bottom of the pan. Now as it starts to really come to a boil, I'm going to step away from it a little bit. Okay, still keeping an eye on things. And I am going to, at this point, add a half a teaspoon of salt, because I like a little bit of salt in my caramel personally. And I'm also going to add half a cup of butter. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit while I add the butter. Okay. It's a cold butter, so it's going to bring the temperature down a little bit, which is a good thing because I don't have to worry about it splashing over me. Because I use a combination of brown and white sugar for flavor, I have to keep a close eye on this brittle because brown sugar will burn. If the butter is in the pan, I'm going to turn the heat back up and I'm gonna give it a couple of stirs just to make sure that the butter's melting in there. And we are gonna cook this caramel to 280 degrees. The butter is happily bubbling away in this pan. I'm just gonna give it a quick stir to make sure there are no little pieces in there clumping around. And this is just gonna boil undisturbed. I'm trying to take it to 280 degrees and I have my trusty little digital thermometer here. We're only at 210 right now. So it's going to take probably 5 or 10 minutes to get this up to temperature. And then once we hit 280 degrees, we're going to add the pistachios. The pistachios, which are shelled, and I have on the side here, are raw because they're going to continue to cook in the caramel. And if I use roasted pistachios, I would run the risk of having them burn. They're also unsalted, which is why I have salt in the caramel. The caramel is slowly coming up in temperature. If you were here right now, you could smell the sugar and the butter. It just it smells amazing and we're watching the color it's getting a little bit darker if you were to use all white sugar it wouldn't be quite this dark yet but because we did put brown sugar in here it's gonna be a much darker darker amber color earlier on in the process the laser thermometer as you can see is really handy when you're candy making because in a pot this size or in a home size batch when you have one of those old school thermometers that you clip to the side of the pan, for the most part they tend to, in my experience, not be deep enough in the candy to actually keep a good, accurate temperature reading. And also because they are on the side of the pan, sometimes the sugar gets trapped behind the thermometer and it crystallizes on you. Whereas if you have a laser thermometer, it's just taking the temperature at the surface and you're not you don't have anything in the pan to get caught up in the candy or interfere with the cooking process. So it makes everything a lot easier to use and to clean. The thing about actually standing here over the pot when you're making the candy is that it smells so good that when you first pour it out of the pan, all you want to do is stick your face in it and start eating it right away, which would be a very bad thing because it's very hot stuff. It's kind of fun to play with. It deflates as you stir it to avoid those hot spots. And then you can watch the caramel kind of just dripping off the spoon. 
and it almost looks like hot caramel sauce. You can just imagine dripping this over ice cream. And even though you would look at this and think that this is why brittle is brittle, actually it's going to deflate when you cool it, which is why we're going to add baking soda later. And that is actually what's going to provide the aeration that will make the caramel softer and crunchier and less apt to break your teeth. We are at 280 degrees now, and you can tell because the sugar at 280 degrees just starts to smoke. So I'm giving it a quick stir before I add my nuts. This is one and a half cups of pistachio nuts, raw and unsalted, as I mentioned before. I'm going to stir it up. This is a little bit more, a higher percentage of nuts than you would see in a traditional brittle because I like there to be a lot of nuts. More nuts, less caramel. And that's immediately going to stiffen up on you when you add the nuts because the temperature is going to drop and the caramel is going to try to solidify. So I'm going to turn the heat back on to remelt it out. So now we are going to take this caramel with the nuts in it to 305 degrees. And that's going to be our final temperature, at which point we're going to add the baking soda. Because the nuts are in it, and because we've used brown sugar, at this point I'm going to keep the heat a little bit lower, and I'm going to keep a sharp eye on the candy. Candy stores, when I was a kid, they used to have packages of the bright red pistachio nuts. I think a lot of people who grew up when we grew up, thought that pistachio nuts were naturally red because you only ever saw them as this bright red nut that would just stain your fingers and your teeth and your lips, which as a little girl was kind of cool because it looked like makeup when I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. But as time has gone by and people have been a little bit more savvy about food and what they like, well, what they like to eat in terms of dyes and additives, you see more and more of the pistachios in their natural state. If I'm going to eat the nuts by themselves, I still really prefer to eat them salted and in their shells because I enjoy the whole process of extracting them from the nut. But if I'm going to spoil myself, then this brittle is definitely the way to go. Okay, the color is getting much darker and we are just about there. We are at 305 degrees. So I'm going to turn this off and now I'm going to add my baking soda. And if it looks a little clumpy, don't worry because you're going to stir it in rapidly. Once you have it stirred in, you want to turn it out on the sill pat as quickly as possible so that you don't deflate it too much. You can see it rising in the pan and it's a little bit streaky, but that'll be fine. And then you just want to turn it out onto the sill pad. You want to move quickly, but you don't have to be super gentle with it. It will take a certain amount of manipulation and still be okay because you don't want it to be too thick either. Okay, so I'm spreading it out a little bit on the pan. The sill pat would keep it from sticking, but if you were doing this at home and you didn't have a sill pat, you could use buttered aluminum foil and that would be fine too. Okay, and at this point I'm going to stop playing with it because I want it to have a nice light texture. I'm just going to shake it a little. And now we're just going to let this mixture cool. And that's your brittle. As you can see, the brittle has cooled. It's not completely cold yet because we can never wait to break the brittle and actually taste it. But it's kind of gone flat and it's all shiny. And if you tap it, you can hear it sounds kind of hollow and hard. So we're going to just break a piece off. If you break it right now, it has a really nice snap. And if you look at it, you can see holes in the caramel which are part of what give it its brittle texture. The flavor on this dark caramel has almost coffee-like undertones and nuances to it. It's really deep and rich tasting and just yummy.